Mrs. Henderson presents. Um, in a plane. Seventy one, let us call it. Seventy one of the book handle, which is quite good. Uh, indeed, we have Dame Judy Dench in the leading role, nominated for an Oscar, BAFTA, other important awards. <coughs> For this role, for this particular role, and others, of course, she won for being Queen Elizabeth the first in uh, Shakespeare in Love. Um, so we also have Bob Hoskins, wonderful, wonderful actor, with a funny name in the movie, Vivian Van Damme. Van Damme. For extravagant content, Jewish, as Mrs. Henderson can see when they all you know, undress. So, uh, the girls, the women on stage, are embarrassed to undress in front of their colleagues. So they say, Okay, you do that. You, you also do that. So, stage hands, then they say, Okay, but you too must have done that. So he's undressing and just then. Mrs. Anderson comes into her theater. So there's a theater she buys, which would be called the windmill. The wind windmill? Um, and the ground, I mean, literally, around the basement. At one point, they're bonding. This is uh, happening during the war, obviously. <laughs> and there was a measure to. Uh, close theaters on this one because of the crowds gathering outside, and then uh, this would be a danger with bombing and all. And they say, Okay, but it's uh, brave. And they say, Where are we safe? Let's go inside. Okay, move it. Sign it. They go in. <coughs> so she's buying this theater, and then it will be managed by Van Damme. <coughs> there are tensions. And good feelings between the two. Uh, Mrs. Henderson seems to see him as a potential partner, not just in, let's say, business, but an amorous partner. So she's infuriated to find um, he has a wife that he presents to her. And she's going off, you have a wife? <laughs> she, she had not known that. Uh, and so he is confronting her. I mean, don't ever act like that you know, to, towards my wife. <coughs> so uh, um, she's a clear and jealous. Okay, I'm not coming to theater, and then she comes uh, in disguise, and he sees her. She's Chinese, and he takes her out. And, uh, comedy. Uh, <coughs> Comedy drama, comedy moments, but there's a lot in there which is uh, tragic. Again, this is happening in World War II with bombings and all. People die. Uh, but also, people finding some solace, finding some, some serenity, some entertainment, also, some, some good looking things and new. To talk about in that because that's one thing they try to um, to be original with. First, he, he he's full of ideas and he's like, okay, let's have one stop. Others have in the afternoon, in the evening programs. We'll have an all day program, and then we're not new. Is the Mulan Illusion Council, but this will not go here. And she's because she has connections, she's 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 a rich lady and she knows the aristocracy in those in, in, in official positions and she's talking to the Lord who is in charge, you know, who's approving or rejecting projects, uh, licenses. So Women wandering around the stage and that. So, what if they're like art? If 
they're not moving. So they managed to find a compromise wherein she would have new women on stage. Uh, but they will not be moving, they will be about statues, uh, making the statues so that it suggests art and would not be so erotic and, um, and arousing, uh, which it is. I mean, the puppets are thrilled and they're very um, enthused and attracted by the gold. Almost all see uh, soldiers, the officers, and those two who will go to war, except for Kerry Riley, a football. As Mary Kelly Riley, one of the most talented and beautiful uh, actresses uh, that I know of. 